What's going on guys? Welcome back to this episode of Restoration with Vic. Today we got the super rare player edition Mike Bibby Jordan 13 Lowe's. A good friend of mine actually gifted these to me. He knows I'm a big Bibby fan and he knows I restore shoes. As you can see, the shoes are destroyed. The uppers have scuffs, creases, and scratches all around. The pots have a yellow and pink tint to it. The insides are also yellowed up. These need a lot of work. So without further ado, let's get it started. For before and after purposes, we're gonna put the left shoe to the side and focus on the right shoe. Next, we're gonna take out our shoelaces and insole to give those a thorough cleaning separately. Now onto the shoe tree, we're gonna adjust it to the size and put it inside our shoe to help us minimize the creasing on the toe box. Next, we're gonna grab our 16 ounce bottle of solution and square two small squirts into our bowl of water. We're basically all prepped, ready to go for this cleaning. We're gonna grab our saw bristle brush, dunk it in our water solution and start hammering the uppers. All right guys, here's a quick update on how it's looking. The white uppers look great. The purple suede was my biggest concern. I was afraid that the purple was gonna bleed all over the white shoe, specifically the white sock runner. Luckily that's not happening, so we're gonna continue cleaning up the shoe using the saw bristle brush. Good to go, we're gonna put this brush to the side and focus on the medium bristle. For this brush, we're gonna clean up all the pods. For those of you who don't know Mike Bibby, he's an NBA player that was drafted by the Vancouver Grizzlies back in 98, and he was one of the first players to be signed by Jordan Brand. He has all these cool player edition sneakers that he got over the years. He spent most of his career with the Sacramento Kings, hence the purple and white colorway. He's also a local legend. He played for the Arizona Wildcats. He still lives around here. He coaches for a high school team. Occasionally we see him around. Dude is super jacked. <laughs> Now onto the last brush, our step bristle brush, so we can clean up these outsoles. We're all done with the step bristle brush. The cleaning turned out great. The purple didn't bleed anywhere on the shoe. The white uppers and the insides turned out great as well. Now, you guys know me, I wanna get this shoe as clean as possible. So that means we're gonna put this shoe inside the washing machine. I typically wouldn't put this shoe inside the washing machine. This shoe's from 2005, making it pretty old, but I wanna get this shoe as clean as possible. There's a couple things that could go wrong. First, I could cause a lot of separation all around the outsole, or this little drum that could come right off. Again, I'm gonna risk it. If that happens, I can easily fix it. Let's put this inside our single laundry bag. And let's grab our detergent pods. We get the shoe at the washing machine, it looks a lot better now. However, the shoe is on the older side, so there is a lot of yellowing around the leather, the sock liner, and the size tag. I wanna get that back to as white as possible, so for this step, we're gonna let them dry inside my indoor setup. We're simply just gonna put the shoe inside the indoor setup, the fan's gonna dry the shoe, the UV rays is gonna sit over the shoe and just widen up the shoe for the next 24 hours. Real simple, we don't gotta do anything. It's been 24 hours, let's check out the results. In person, these do look a lot whiter. The leather overall is a lot brighter. The sock liner, same thing. The biggest difference I can see is the size tag. On the before, as it's really bad yellow tint, on the after, it's back to fully white. Overall, this trick worked nicely. If you guys have some sneakers that have some yelling on the uppers, try using our solution to scrub them down and let them dry under some UV rays and might work wonders for you. Now let's go ahead and put this shoe to the side and focus on the next step of this restoration, the pods. As you can see, it has this really bad purple tint. This is something I never really had to deal with in the past, but I might know how to get it off. First, we're gonna tape off the purple areas. Then we're gonna grab some bar super stick, lay it down on each pod, let the glue dry. Once it's fully dried, we're gonna peel it. Hopefully when we peel it, it removes that purple tint.
Here's where we're at. That trick did not work, you guys. I tried it over and over again, and it gave us zero results. In the past, I've only gone in and applied two coats onto the rubber, and when I peel it off, it pulls off all the color nicely. I did some more research, and it turned out Bar Super Stick changed up their formula. They got rid of this one specific chemical called toluene. That chemical right there is responsible for pulling the color, so that's why we got zero results. I tried buying some toluene, mixed it up into this Bar Super Stick can, did nothing for us. All I did was ruin my glue. So we're gonna have to deal with these purple pods. I could go in and paint them, but the thing is, you don't wanna paint rubber areas because it's gonna chip right off. And plus, it's so hard to get any tape to stick onto this purple felt. So if I was to airbrush it, all that paint will just get underneath onto that purple area, and we don't want that. So we're gonna focus on the white leather uppers. Right now, there's a lot of deep scratches all around. Before we could paint it, we gotta smooth these areas down using the sandpaper method. While leather is fully prepped, I also use an X-Acto knife to clean up the separation on both sides. There was a bunch of old glue. Before I could go in and apply new glue, all that stuff needs to be cleaned out. In the past, when it comes to other materials, I usually use acetone and cotton balls, but for this, since it's suede, I didn't want to use those chemicals because it will ruin the purple areas, so we just use an X-Acto knife. So before we can start gluing and painting, there's a couple more details that we got to take care of. First, there's a lot of little loose threads all around the shoe. We got to clean that up. And we gotta finish up the prep work by using some acetone and cotton balls to hit up the entire white leather. We're getting there. We got the insides fully cleaned up, outside is fully prepped. Now we're onto the taping so we can lay down our white paint. Let's paint. For this white color, I added a drop of black and brown just so it can match a slightly aged white leather. For this, we're gonna lay it down using my airbrush. Paint job is complete, the white looks great, it matches the rest of the leather perfectly. The reason why I taped it off into different sections was because I didn't want to get any paint on the leather cut and I didn't want to get any overspray on the purple areas. Luckily, it all worked out. Now we're on to the gluing. Earlier, I really went ahead and cleaned up all the old glue using an X-Acto knife, so we gotta fix this up using some bar stripper stick. Don't worry, this is a brand new can, not the old spoil can. First, we're gonna tape off the uppers and then lay down some glue, wait about seven minutes, and then we'll stick it together. Glue job's complete. We're basically done with this restoration. Before we lace the shoe up, we gotta touch up one detail. The silver gel man on the back is kind of fading off in some areas. For this, we'll be using a silver Sharpie to touch it up.
All right, guys, that is gonna bring us to an end on this full restoration on this player edition Mike Baby Jordan 13. Overall, this restoration turned out great. This is a rare shoe. I wanted to keep it as original as possible and not just cake paint all around the shoe. We started off by giving this shoe a proper deep clean inside and out. We put him in the washing machine using our Shoe Manager Signature Shoe Cleaning Kit. We got it super clean inside and out. For the drying process, we put it inside the indoor setup. There was a lot of yelling going on in the sock liner area and the lace straps. After about 24 hours, a lot of the yelling did come out. After that, we moved on to a lot of prep work. On the uppers, there was tons of scratches and scuffs all around. We had to use the sandpaper method to get those areas as smooth as possible. Then we hit it with acetone and gave it a fresh coat of white paint all around. Next, we moved on to the separation on both sides of the shoe. We had to go in using an X-Acto knife to remove all the oak glue. If I used any chemicals, it would ruin the purple suede. Then we went in using some bar super stick, laid down the glue on both sides and shut both separations cleanly. One thing that I tried to fix in this restoration that just didn't work out was the pods. As you can see on this shoe specifically, there's a lot of purple going on. I picked this shoe specifically because I thought I could get this stuff out. Unfortunately, the glue just isn't the same formula. That chemical that I needed to pull that color just didn't work out. I tried using our Solar Vive, didn't work as well. It did get the yellowing out of the rest of the pods, but the purple is still there. If you guys know of a way to get this out, let me know in the comment section down below. Overall, this restoration turned out great. I'm glad that I was able to work on this shoe because Mike Baby is a local legend. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube page. This is Vic Almighty. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll catch you guys next Monday. See you guys.